Okay, we're straight back. I didn't even create that YouTube video yet. But this one, we're going to do, let's create an IBMI logical file. So let's go straight back into our source code. So um, what do we need to create a logical file? Well, what we need to know is the name of the physical file that we're going to be looking over and uh, the key that we want to look at that file in, right? It's really that simple. So let's create a new one called cust lf. So we'll create f6. We're going to create one called cust lf and the type will be, guess what? A logical file, the logical over cust pf. It's just descriptions. Let's get into the SEU. Right, you know the trick here. We can do the exact same thing, right? We're going to do an input prompt. It's going to ask us for the record format. Oh, wait. I'm not recording, am I? God damn it. <laughs> There's got to be a really blah, blah. right. We're going to create the record formats. So we'll put our record format name in. What do we call it? Do we call it record format. That's how bad my memory is. I can't even remember. But so we give it the record format name so we know what we're talking about. And then the difference with um, a logical file is we have to tell it what physical we're going to be scoped over. So we type in p file cast pf. Of course, I could qualify that. I could say uh, library name Litten slash cust pf, but you really don't want, I can't stress how important it is never to hard code library names or schema names, right? Because you can then adjust your library list, put different libraries into different places and use the different data. Um, whenever you compile a logical, it will compile over the one that it finds in its library list. This way you could have one copy of this source and you could compile it into a test library. And if that had uh, the test physical file in there, it would scope over that. Or you could compile it into a, a production data set. Um, and as long as that's top of your library list, it will be scoped over that. We'll talk about that in a minute and I'll show you how to find out what logical files are scoping over what physicals. It's very simple. So in the cast LF, this is, this is it. I've created a logical file. That simple, right? Um, let me just do a split screen in SU and I'm going to show you the physical file source. If I press Shift F3, it says, what do you want to look at? I want to do a number one. I want to look at a member and I want to look at my cust PF. Very rudimentary uh, IDE is SEU, but SEU does the trick. So this is letting me view my physical file so I can make sure that I've spelt, spelt, blah, 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 spelt things right. So I'm defining my record format. That matches excellent. I know that my p file statement is right because it matches the file name. By default, a logical will include all the field names. But I'll come back to that in a second. Let's say that I want to make a key field uh, sequencing by first name. All I need to do is insert a key of first name. And that's it. This will create me a logical with first name being sequenced. So the very first row that it reads will be someone whose first name is Aaron. And the last one that it reads will be someone whose first name is Zanzibar. That's simple, right? Um, by default, as I said, it will include all of these fields. So what I could do is I could include the fields in my logical file just by doing this. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to copy this source code. I'm saying, but by saying CC and CC, I'm doing a copy block. So I'm saying copy all of these rows after here. Now, the only difference in a logical file is because the logical file is picking up the sizes from the physical, I don't need to define any of these sizes here. So I'm going to get rid of them. This is essentially, oops, what did I do there? Oh, I think I, no, I did nothing. I just rolled up by mistake. So here's my file, including those three, those four fields from the primary file. Let's compile it and have a quick look, shall we? So I'll come out, I'll save it, and I'm going to compile custlf into my library. So if I say work file, everything in Litten, beginning with cust, I can see there's a physical file, and I can see there's a logical file. 
because I'm doing a work with files command, I can look at the uh, physical file description, which tells me if all the things about this file, dates, timestamps, when I did it, who did it, where they did it, what the size of it is, if there's any deleted rows in here, how much storage can be stored. The only bits you're really caring about, generally speaking, is go right to the bottom of the display file description. You can see your file details. You can see how many members. Remember, I was talking about the chapters within the book. That's one. And how many records I've got in there, which is one. So that was me doing, from a work file, just to really confuse you, the display file description command. So if I say display file description of cust pf, that shows me all of these file values. If I say display file field description, disp ffd of that file, it will show me all of the field names that are defined within that field. Right? I can do the same with the logical file if I want. This shows me the logical file and the field names that it's picking up. Let me go and change that cut that logical. Let's say that this happens to be a logical view where I don't care about the age or the shoe size. I just want to see the first name and the surname. I also want to see it sequenced first name A to Z, or for you Americans, A to Z. And I also want to see the surname sequenced. But I want to see the surnames backwards get that so this will show me all the data from a to z so if there's an Adam it will show me all the Adams first but within that it will show me the surnames for the Adams let's say I've got an Adam Smith and an Adam West it will show me both of those but within the Adams it will be keyed by surname next and because I've got descend on surname it will show me Adam West first then Adam Smith second, and Adam, Adam, Adam last. You with me? And it's, it's just going to ignore the other two fields because that's all I'm saying I'm going to do. So let me just compile that one. Compile it. It says it already exists. Do you want to replace it? I say yes. We do a display file description. Display file field description of that logical. You can now see when I display the logical file, it only has those two fields. Likewise, let me put some more data within the actual physical. So I'm going to use this updateData command. I'm going to go into CustPF. There's the one that I entered earlier. I'm going to press F9 to insert some more. I'm going to create an Adam Smith. I don't care about age or shoe size. Ah, OK, he's, uh, he's 11. And he's shoe size 11. We're going to create an Adam uh, West. He's 99 with really big shoes. And we'll create a Zanzibar. Is that even a name? Zanzibar Zzzz. And he's obviously 107 years old, but he's got infeasibly small feet, size three. So there's my data. So if I do that display PFM, remember the display physical file member shows us the raw data in the file. If I look at that, there's my four rows of data. Remember, it's showing us the signed data because what signed gives us, it lets us see it. And the pact is just showing us as gobbledygook until we look at the hex and we can see what those values are. Alternatively, I can run a quick query over it. Run query, start n for none, then the file name. And here it shows me the data in nice SQL-ish way. There's my four rows. If I whip across to the right with shift F8, I can see the age and the shoe size. Now, what happens if I run that query over the logical? So here's the physical. I'm looking at it in, in a rival sequence. Nick, Adam, Zanzibar, Lytton, Smith, West, right? Let's say that I run that same query over the logical file. I'm still seeing Nick, Adam, Zanzibar. But I'm not seeing the date, uh, uh, the age, and the shoe size because they're not included. This run query is just showing me the raw data view from that logical. The raw data from the logical is just showing me the first name and surname, right? If I want to see it in that sequence, 
I could do a file update on it, for example. So let me do an update data on cust lf. Oh, where did all that come from? So I'm now going to go in and update using my logical file. So here I am updating the file. If I just page down and scroll through the data, what's the first one I'm going to see? Doo -doo 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 yeah, the first one will be the lowest alphabetic first name, which is Adam with a descending surname because that's how I did it. So it's West. So the next one will be Adam Smith, then me, then old Zanzibar at the end. If I wanted to flick this round the entire other way, and I also don't want to cherry pick the fields. I just want to see all of them. And I want to see just in a surname sequence. Now let's do it in age. <laughs> what am I going to get here? This is going to show me all the fields in the file keyed by age, youngest to oldest, right? So let's take out, compile that. There I'm compiled. How about I just scroll through that data again? I'm going to do an up de data. For you freshers, I was pressing F9 there to retrieve back through my commands that I was entering. So I'm going to page down. What am I going to see? There's the youngest, old Adam Smith. Good old Nick. Cool, Adam West's a bit old and crusty. And Zanzibar's really old, 170. He's older than your wife or husband or whatever. I don't even know what I'm waffling about. Anyway, that's logical files. Now the next iteration of logical files is join logical files where we could have two customer files. So let's say, for example, you have... Uh, I'm going to do a whole separate lesson about that. Um, but I don't think I'm going to do it now because it's um, just entering the evening, uh, which is, can you hear that? Yes, it's gin and tonic o'clock. That's what I'm going to go and do. Is pour myself a gin and tonic, sit outside in the sunshine and relax and convert both these videos and publish them up. So sayonara. What the hell am I talking about? Seriously, though, I hope that helps somebody and you're not just listening to the inane ramblings of a crazy old Englishman, which you are.